Wireless and cellular networks are part of almost any conversation about next generation communications networks, but how much do we know about these theories of cellular communications and why is that important? Dr. Michael DeLomo and Dr. Rick and Tacker with RF Academics will tell us why these theories are often overlooked in today's wireless world and how we can learn more. And gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. I know you're both local, so thanks for making the drive in and uh, opening our eyes more to wireless, wireless and cellular networks. I know that um, you have a series of workshops coming up and we'll talk about, towards, talk about that towards the end of the conversation. But more so, uh, why is it important for our viewers and our members in the industry at large to know the fundamentals of wireless, wireless and cellular technologies? And Michael, I'll ask you that question. Um, well, you gotta realize that if you talk to an engineer in the 60s or 70s about using the wireless communications channel, he'd have thought you were completely crazy. I mean, you've got multipath singles bouncing off of buildings, you've got Doppler shifting because everything is moving, you're moving, the truck is going by outside. This makes the, con the channel very difficult to communicate in. And the important thing to get out of this, the important point to understand, is that every technology that we have today, uh, starting from you know, the old first generation amps and digital amps through GSM, CDMA 2000, uh, UMTS, HSPA, all the way to LTE and LTE Advanced, all of these technologies have to overcome the problems created by the channel. And that's why you need a, a fundamental understanding of what uh, is actually happening. Rick, and as you know, RF Academics is bringing uh, their workshops to TIA headquarters next month. Um, there's an emphasis on radio frequency theories. Why is it important for our audience to know what that is? Sure. Um, uh, thanks for having us here. Uh, fundamentals of uh, radio frequencies remain the same, regardless of any communication, whether you're talking about cellular communication, satellite communication, or microwave communication. Uh, radio frequency is a medium. It's invisible. And it is really essential for everybody to understand, dealing with any type of cellular communication or wireless communication for that matter, how, what are the characteristics of RF and how our surroundings actually affect its behavior. Um, about uh, modern day cellular communication, everything is actually an e ecosystem now. It's not just simply dealing with cellular communication. So when you're dealing with um, uh, cellular technologies, it is essential for you to understand different elements which is affecting cellular communication. For example, Wi-Fi offloading is one of the crucial part of today's industry when it comes to cellular uh, data networks. And it is essential to understand not only Wi-Fi along with 4G and LTE, but you also need to understand how all other elements affect uh, each other and how they actually build this wireless ecosystem together. Now, of course, Michael, I mentioned at the top of the show that uh, these workshops are a series, and I also mentioned that we'll talk about that right at the end of the show as to the significance of why it's a series. But let's talk about workshop number one. Workshop number one is called Understanding RF and Cell Cellular. That's the title of the workshop. Can you tell us how uh, you determine how to break that workshop down and the fundamentals of it? All right. Um, well, the first thing you need to do is go over the uh, basic principles of cellular. I mean, uh, you talk about RF, radio frequency energy. How do you generate it? And how do you code your data on it? How do you code your voice on it? How do you, how do you use this thing? Then you have to move into the next obvious question. How do you get it from here to there? How does it get from the tower uh, to my phone? Uh, and to do that, you have to talk about you know, propagation and modeling propagation and so forth. And then finally, you know, it's great that it's getting to my phone, but do I have enough to actually make a telephone call? Do I have enough to be able to download a movie? And in order to understand that, you need to understand how, uh, how link budgets work, how the power is going to, uh, where the power is going to go after it leaves your, uh, leave, after your, where your speech goes after it leaves your microphone. Um, and not only do you have to worry about the base station talking to you, you've got to be able to talk back to the base station. So there's a reverse link budget that has to figure into the plan as well. Section number two, Rick, in, uh, mm -hmm. is called the evolution of cellular technologies. Of course, sure. we're still talking about workshop number one. Section number two, can you give us a synopsis of that section? Uh, so during this section, actually, we are going to discuss about uh, uh, the history of all the wireless technologies. It's going to be a history lesson of all the uh, cellular technologies, starting from first generation all the way to here. Um, we need to understand that uh, it's, it's very easy to forget when people are talking about 4G and LTE and what's next, uh, that even the second generation of technology is still existing, it's operational, and it's a really crucial part of our day-to-day -day life, and it, it's really important for cellular operators as well. So during this section, we are going to focus on technical parameters and technical features of all these technologies, starting from first generation all the way to this point. 
Now, I noticed part of uh, Section 2 mentions fifth generation technologies. Um, and I also noticed that it says a, a brief mention of that. I don't know if, correct sure. me if I'm wrong. Uh, why does it say that? And are we jumping way ahead talking about fifth generation? Uh, uh, it's a very good question. Uh, about 5G, uh, let me mention this way. We are not going to teach anything about 5G. But what we are going to do is actually we are going to highlight all the initiatives around 5G. In fact, academia and industries uh, hasn't defined 5G yet. In fact, they refrain from defining this technology at this point. Uh, however, uh, the expectations around 5G, capacity, connection, and uh, coverage is, is being discussed. Plus, uh, industry is actually uh, planning uh, uh, to invest heavily in the academia for 5G research. So we are going to actually summarize all these initiatives as part of this workshop when it comes to 5G. Lastly, we are going to mention about possible spectrum options available for 5G applications as well. Michael, of course, I mentioned uh, there's three sections in the first workshop. We already talked about two of them. Section number three is called Cellular Infrastructure and Design. How much of this section will be discussed around densified networks, head nets, um, and uh, new cellular architectures? Okay, well, this section is gonna build primarily on ideas that we talked about in section one and section two on link budgets and evolving technologies. Sure, so uh, if I may, so during this workshop, actually, we are planning to discuss more on the macro cell size structure rather than uh, anything else. Our focus would be actually how cell sites are designed nowadays, what kind of RF components you see at a typical macro cell site. Uh, more importantly, what kind of RF measurements one need to carry out to make sure that the integrity of all this cellular network is actually being maintained. When we talk about um, head nets or, or macro cell site densified networks, that will be actually focused on our uh, future workshops, especially on DAS, Wi-Fi, and small cells. So we're finally getting to it. Uh, the significance of this series, uh, the wireless and cellular network workshop series. Michael, why a series? Well, you know, RF Academics uh, and TIA have partnered uh, to offer a series of five workshops. Uh, and we want to build up uh, the major components of modern uh, cellular networks and, and explore each of them as it's due. So in the first workshop, we're handling, you know, the basics of RF, how cellular works. Then the next workshop is going to be on, uh, on Wi-Fi and data offloading. That'll handle part of, your, uh, part of your answer to the HetNet question. The other half comes up in the third workshop, which will be later in the year. The second workshop is coming up in spring, but third workshop later uh, in the year will uh, we'll handle DAS and small cells, uh, technologies to help you get the data rates that people want these days. Uh, followed by a, a section on microwave backhaul so that you can actually get, you know, it's great you can get data from your phone to the base station. How do you get from the base station out to the internet or out to the world at large? And then finally, you know, everyone wants to know about LTE, LTE Advanced, the latest technologies. That will be the fifth workshop. I know that our entire TIA audience that's watching now and the folks at the workshop next month are excited about RF academics. Being here at corporate headquarters, we're also excited about the wireless and cellular network workshop series, and we're looking forward to working with you guys uh, down the road. Thank you yeah, very much. Thank you. So much. Thank you.